In this quick video I'm going to show you how to create this layout including a basic text field, a checkbox with some logic to make this field mandatory, uh, use an integer field, an email field with a validation. Use a date field, which can either be used with the uh, uh, date picker or alternatively just uh, typed in. Using a uh, radio button, which has an effect on the area just below it or to the side. And quickly creating uh, checkbox groups that has some logic behind you which might give you some alternate content which is displayed when it's ticked. So I created this one earlier but what I'll do for this example first of all is delete a whole bunch of stuff uh, just to get started and that's basically just left the section with some section level headings underneath it. You can see how those are mapped. The basic input is the level one and uh, the examples are the level two section headings. And these are actually content blocks, so I can actually start placing things in here. So the first example was uh, just using a basic text field. I'm gonna go over to the palette and type in text and a whole bunch of things come up here. In fact, uh, text field is also in my favorites because obviously it's something that you use a lot. I'm just going to drag it onto the structure and type in what I'd like it to be called. Now by default it will actually inherit a whole bunch of properties and settings depending on what's defined in the template. This is set up on an organizational level and any thing that you build in the form is basically an override of those template settings. So I'm just going to add in a little checkbox next to that. I'll just double click it, it places it next to the item which is currently highlighted and type in make, make mandatory. Now just for layout purposes I'd like to keep that on the same line. Click on layout, keep on same line and save. And all of what that does is it places it on the same line as the previous item. Now I'll put the logic which exists behind that, which is a rule, and it's a mandatory rule. We're going to make it rule-based. If the make mandatory selection equals true, then it's mandatory. Very simple rule. Now I can test this straight away by going to preview. So I'll click on the uh, section that I was just editing, which is basic input, and you can see straight away I've got that text field, and uh, when I click on the Make Mandatory button, a little red star appears next to the text field, indicating that it's mandatory. If I was to try and submit this now, it will actually give me an error message saying that a, a, uh, a text field is required. That's what we called it. I can double click on that, and it takes me directly there. I don't need to build that. That all happens automatically. Now the next thing that we wanted to add to this form underneath a text field was an integer field. So I'm just going to use an integer field from over here. I can uh, drag it onto the uh, wireframe. It will actually add it after anything that I drop it on. Give it a name. Now by default, this block which holds all of these items is configured to lay out from top to bottom. There are some other choices here but it kind of makes sense to make a section level field flow from top to bottom. The next thing that we want to use is an email. Uh, this is all preset. We don't need to um, tell it what an email address should be. I'm going to drag it over here, give it a label and I also want a date picker. So I search for date. I'm just going to use the standard date field. And then I'm going to think about how I want those laid out. So I'm going to right click on this one 
and I'm going to wrap the field in a block. Now a block can be used to define a layout but it's also sometimes used to group data elements together. We're going to give it a label called layout grid just so that we understand that this is this block was used for layout purposes and we're going to include these three fields inside the block and all of what that does is it wraps up those three fields into an element which can be configured together so I'm going to change it to a grid layout have three columns wide and save and you can see here on the wireframe that they've laid out exactly like I've expected the great thing about a grid layout is that these fields will actually resize depending on the width of the screen that it's filling. Now in HTML desktop we fix the width but uh, say for example somebody's coming in from a tablet device and it's filling full screen. In that case you you want to be able to cater for all the different tablet devices on the market not just some of them and you want it to be able to fill the screen and look nice on all those devices. Let's preview that. going into the basic input section you can now see how those are nicely spaced apart and uh, that's automatically a date picker. Uh, this is desktop mode so it's designed to work in a fixed width but if we look at that in a uh, tablet mode and click on basic input this will actually behave differently because of the form factor. right down to a mobile phone form factor which will show this differently. The next example showed how we would uh, construct a, a set of radio buttons. What we'll do in this case is use the radio button assistant to build the radio button group and the radio button items and the rich text label. We can always go in and edit how that's built later on but it's a nice way of getting started. So the question was how many columns would you like? Incidentally this generate name checkbox here is used to define what the block is going to be called. We're just going to rename it to be something human readable. So let's type in some radio button labels. We're going to allow either two, three or more radio buttons. But if somebody selects the value more, we want to be able to ask them another question, ask them why they want to have more columns. And to do that, we're going to create a content block under the more radio button. So we need to choose whether or not this is going to be a mandatory selection, uh, whether or not one of these values will be selected initially and uh, what the layout of those radio buttons will be. When I click finish, the structure over here is automatically built with the number of columns block, the rich text label, which can be modified to override what's been defined in the style sheets, for example by making it bold. And then I can dive into the layout block here to actually add that multi-line text field which was in the example. And of course we just need to make a small correction there for the layout if we want it to appear to the right of those radio buttons. Now my preferred method of doing this is actually to modify the structure by moving the more content uh, in by one block and then defining it as being a layout keep on same line and then adjusting the previous block here to uh, not expand vertically but be of a fixed width. I'm going to say 
60 millimeters. Let's see what that looks like in HTML. And when we select more, there you go. It gives me my content block. The final example that we're going to look at here is how to actually swap between two or three columns based on the user selection there. This might be a good example of if an applicant answers yes to a, to a question that requires them to fill out a little bit more information. What we'll do is we'll close this radio buttons example and we'll move into the checkboxes example here. First I need to be able to create my columns in a way that's going to be laid out nicely and as you saw in the previous example the best way to do this is with the grid. This time I'm actually going to make my section level 2 heading at the grid. In fact uh, this set setting is still there from before when I deleted the information underneath it. Then I'm just going to add some blocks and each of those blocks will be top to bottom flow. I'm going to call it column 1, column 2 and column 3. Now just the way that I double clicked on it they've gone and nested themselves in under each other and I'm just going to fix that up now. And you can see here on the wireframe how they're laid out. And what I'd like to do is hide that third column if somebody selects that they only want to see two columns. This is done under rules. There's a visibility rule. We're going to make it script based this time just to show you another way of doing this. And I'm just going to scroll up to the section that has the number of columns question. And if they select three, then it's visible. And actually that's all I need to do because is selected returns true. I don't actually need to write any code in this situation. And then I can start dumping some content into there. Uh, in my previous example, it was uh, using the checkbox assistant into column one. I had a question, what do you like to eat? And we'll add some values in here, ham, cheese and avocado. Pretty basic. And in the second column, I'm going to use the checkbox assistant again. And this time, mark all that are true. And just to complete my little joke here, I've got some rich text. I won't bother formatting it for this video. And in the third column here, we wanted to put another checkbox assistant. And here we go, I've created the three columns. I'm going to preview this. And we can see here that if I select two columns, it will go to two columns. Uh, it'll go to three columns. If I select more, it'll give me my pop-up box. If I select that there are robots on Mars, it will come up with that text.